Hello and welcome to Lighting Your Way here at Covenant Caribbean Church 127 Moline Road. The cool breeze is blowing. Today we celebrate our creative God. Come and worship with us as we celebrate all of God's creation in what he has done to us in his blessings and his creative work. Join us. a gateway to God's glory and our sub theme for today celebrating our creative God celebrating our creative 
God. The passage read in Genesis begins, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And this simple statement that God created the heavens and the earth is one of the most challenging concepts, I believe, confronting the mind. And there are some scientists who say that the number of stars in creation is equal to all the grains of sands and all the beaches of the world. So I don't know if anybody tried to count any sand yesterday when they were on the beach. Yet, friends, this complex sea of spinning stars functions with remarkable order and efficiency. And to say that the, the universe just happened or evolved requires more faith than to believe that God is behind these amazing statistics. God truly did create a wonderful universe. And God did not need, had no need, I believe, to create the universe, but he chose to create it. And why may I ask? Because God is love. And love is best expressed towards something or someone else. So God created the world and people as an expression of his love. So friends, I would advise us to avoid reducing God's creation to merely scientific terms. Rather, that God created the universe because... He loves us. The creation story teaches us much about our creative God and also about ourselves. First, we learn about God, that God is creative. And as the creator, he is distinct from his creation. He is eternal and in control of the world he created. So no matter what you hear happening around you or see happening around you, our creative God is still in control of this world that he created. We also learn, friends, about ourselves that since God chose to create us, we are all valuable in his eyes. We are more important than the animals. And if we should read further in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 tells us about humans, that God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. That shows us how valuable we are in the sight of God. And so to rule over something, friends, is to have absolute authority and control over it. And God the Creator has ultimate rule over the earth, and he exercises his authority with loving care. So when he delegated some of his authority to the human race, he expected us to take responsibility for the environment and other creatures that share our planet. We must not be careless. We must not be wasteful as we fulfill this charge. Because our God, our creative God, was careful how he made this earth. And we must not be careless, brothers and sisters, how we take care of it. God made both male and female in his image. And neither is more in the image and likeness of God than the other. 
From the beginning, the Bible places both male and female at the top, at the pinnacle of God's creation. So neither sex is exalted. Neither is exalted, neither is depreciated. But how, just how did God create the earth? And this is still a subject of great debate. Some say that with a sudden explosion, the universe appeared. Others say God started the process and the universe evolved over millions of years. And almost every ancient religion has its own story to explain how the earth came into being. And almost every scientist has an option on the origin of the universe. But under the Bible shows one supreme God creating the earth out of his great love and giving all people a special place in it. We may never know all the answers, friends, how God created the earth. But the Bible tells us that God created it. And that fact alone gives worth and dignity to all of us. So if God created the earth, who created God, we may ask. I believe to ask that question is to assume that there was another creator before God. At some time, however, we are forced to stop asking that question and realize that there had to be something or someone that has always existed. And God is that infinite being who has always been and who was created by no one. God is that infinite being who has always been and who was created by no one. And this is difficult, friends, to understand, you know, because our finite minds cannot comprehend what is infinite. We must not limit the infinite God to our finite understanding. And so the statement in the narrative which said the earth was formless, and empty provides the setting for the creation narrative that follows. During the second and third days of creation, God gave form to the universe. And during the next three days, God filled the earth with living things. And the darkness over the surface of the deep was dispelled on the first day when God created light. The image of the Spirit of God hovering over the waters is similar to a mother bird caring for and protecting its young, as Deuteronomy 32, 11, and 12 tells us. God's Spirit, God's Holy Spirit was actively involved in the creation of the world. The psalm we read, if we had gone on to verse 30, it would tell us that. Psalm 104, it said, When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. So God's care and protection, friends, are still active today. Still active today. And we may wonder when we ponder these questions, we may ask, how long did God take to create the world? And there are two basic views that come about the days of creation. One view is that each day was a literal 24-hour period. And the other view is that each day represents an indefinite period of time. Some are saying even millions of years. Well, the Bible does not say how long these time periods were. So the real question, however, is not how long God took 
but how he did it. God created the earth in an orderly fashion and he created us male and female as unique beings capable of communication with him. And no other part of creation can claim that remarkable privilege. So it is not important, friends, how long it took God to create the world, whether a few days or a billion years, but that he created it just the way he wanted it. Take a look around at the diversity of life forms, at the contrasting scenery within our Caribbean region, the differences between each country and how each su is suited to life within their own environment. Look at the colors of nature, the shapes and forms, and then tell me that we don't have a God who knows about art and creativity in its purest form. There are some people, you know, who think that God is dull and boring. Nothing could be further from the truth. And when we express ourselves in worship, as we have done so far today, it tells us that we don't worship a dull and boring God, but a God who is alive and well and excites us in all of creation. Nothing could be further than from the truth, friends. It is a lie and a deception that sin and evil are creative and exciting while following Christ is boring. Look at all the forms of natural beauty in the world. Who created the mountains, the valleys, the rivers, the oceans, the beaches? Who created sunrises and sunset, light and color? Does that come from a boring God? Who created the different kinds of tastes and smell and sounds? Does that come from a boring God? And I want you to consider this one very carefully and tell me if this comes from a boring God. Consider the method that God came up with for human reproduction. Does that come from a boring God? I want, only here, consider the method that God came up with for human reproduction. Would a boring God come up with that? Most an exciting and creative God. That's the God. That's the God we celebrate, brothers and sisters. And it makes you wonder, it makes you wonder what is he working on next? Just look at the diversity of the world, friends. If we want to be like God, we must value and enjoy the diversity. We should value creativity, creativity because we serve a creative God. Even in the psalm, the psalm read, Psalm 104, is a poetic summary of God's creation of the world as found in the first chapter of Genesis. What God created each day is mentioned by the writer as a reason to give God praise. God's act of creation deserves the praise of all people. The earth is built on God's foundations. It can never be moved by anyone other than God. And even though, as 2 Peter 3 verse 10 tells us, even though one day the heavens and the earth we have now will be destroyed, that ever-creative God will create a new heaven and a new earth that will last forever. The same power that undergirds the world, friends, also provides a firm foundation for all believers. And so in the epistle read from Romans, Paul answers a common objection 
to believe in God. How could a loving God, a creative God, send anyone to hell, especially someone who has never heard about Christ? In fact, Paul says, God has revealed himself plainly in all creation to all people, and yet people reject even this basic knowledge of God. And also, everyone has an inner sense of what God requires, but they chose not to live up to it. In the epistle, put another way, friends, people's moral standards are always better than their behavior. And so if people suppresses God's truth in order to live their own way, they have no excuse. We know the truth. And we know we will have to endure the consequences of ignoring it. So people suppress the truth by their wickedness and thus refuse a relationship with God. And although people may believe there is a God, at times they refuse to commit themselves to him. Although nature itself reveals God, People need to be told about Jesus and how, through him, they can have a personal relationship with the creative God. Knowing that God exists is not enough. People must learn that God is loving, and they must understand, as Romans 5 a tells us, that he demonstrates his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. They must also show how to accept God's forgiveness for their sins. Does anyone have an excuse for not believing in God? I believe the Bible answers with an emphatic no. God has revealed what he is like in and through his creation. So every person, therefore, either rejects or accepts God. And don't be fooled, friends. When the day comes for God to judge our response to him, no excuse will be accepted. And so it is for us to begin right now to give our devotion and worship to him. So what kind of God does creation reveal? Creation shows us, friends, a God of might. Creation shows us a God of intelligence and intricate detail. Creation shows us a God of order and beauty, a God who controls powerful forces. That is the general revelation. But through special revelation, through the Bible, through the coming of Jesus Christ, we learn about God's love and forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. God has graciously given us both sources that we might fully believe in him. God reveals his nature, his divine nature and personal qualities through creation even though creation's testimony has been distorted by the fall. Adam's sin resulted in a divine curse on the whole natural order, as Genesis 3, 17 to 19 tells us. Thorns and thistles were an immediate result, and natural disasters have been common from Adam's day up to today. In Romans 8, 9 to 21, Paul says that creation itself is eagerly awaiting its own redemption from the effects of sin. We are creation itself is eagerly awaiting. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, 
but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. So from that passage, from the passage read in Romans, we may ask the question, how could intelligent people, how could people who know about God's creative work turn to idolatry? Idolatry begins, friends, when people reject what they know about God and instead of looking to him as the creator and sustainer of life, they begin to see themselves as the center of the universe. And so they soon invent gods that are convenient projections of their own selfish plans and actions. These gods may be wooden figures, but they may also be goals or things we pursue, such as power and money, leadership ambitions. They may even be misrepresentations of God himself, making God in our own image instead of us in his image. The common denominator is this, friends. Idolaters worship the things God created rather than the creator, God himself. Is there any priority greater than God? Does God take first place in our lives? Do we worship God, the creator, or idols of our own making? Creation is filled, friends, with stunning variety, revealing the rich creativity, goodness, and wisdom of our loving and creative God. As you observe your natural surroundings, thank God, praise Him for His creativity. Celebrate, I say, our creative God. Take a fresh look at people around you, seeing each one as God's unique creation, each with his or her own special talents, abilities, and gifts. Thank God. Thank God for the created gifts he has given to you, and use and develop your creative gifts. Engage all of life for God's glory. Remember, friends, Remember that God created all things good. God has put us in charge of his creation. We can know God through his creation. We should use our creative gifts to bring glory to God in all areas of our life. That, I believe, is our calling as Christians who have been redeemed from sin in this world by Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Am I ready to answer this call to celebrate our creative God? Amen. Thank you ever so much for joining us today in our work experience as we celebrated our creative God. May you give your life to Him so that God can work His purpose out in all that you do. We would like to hear from you. You can contact us on the information on your screen and make your way in lighting your way with us here at Covenant Moravian Church. God bless you and continue to celebrate our creative God.